Here's a disturbing fact. Women in Utah are more likely to be shot and killed by a loved one than a stranger. Protective orders aim to keep guns out of that equation. But our investigation found gaps in, in enforcement. And a survivor of domestic violence tells us the law doesn't go far enough. I believe that a family unit is important. In quiet moments like these, Melissa Castle reflects on a less peaceful time. So it was really hard. In 2019, she got a protective order against her ex. And we packed up our belongings and we left. The court order barred him from having any weapons. But two years later, Cache County deputies reported finding 38 guns in his home, along with thousands of rounds of ammunition. I know because the officer that night called me and said, you can sleep safe tonight. Her ex pleaded guilty to possessing a gun as a restricted person. But Melissa believes the state should have taken action sooner. Somebody has to change something. Utah is one of 32 states where you can't legally have a gun if you have a domestic violence protective order against you. But only 22 states require that you actually surrender that gun to police or someone else. It's an honor system advocates say isn't working. Several Utahns have been killed by the very perpetrator named in current or previous orders of protection. State data shows from 2009 to 2016, 18 Utahns died this way. Sue Ann Sands of American Fork was one of them. Police said she was shot and killed by her ex-boyfriend in 2016. And more have followed. Heidi Lynn Bentley was killed by her husband in 2020 after she filed for a protective order and a divorce. Year after year after year, it is the lethal combination. Victoria McFarland is a federal prosecutor focused on firearm cases. And when a protective order is issued, it would be lovely if the judge had the ability to order law enforcement to go search the house and the vehicle and all of the storage areas. But for a number of reasons, that's just not a practical reality. The KSL investigators surveyed more than 40 law enforcement agencies serving protective orders across the state. Many said they serve hundreds a year. None said they'd ever been ordered to confiscate someone's weapons in the process. A state law passed earlier this year now requires the person served with the protective order to sign that they understand they can't lawfully have a gun. Utah lawmakers took another step this year to keeping weapons out of the wrong hands. Investigators now have to run a background check before returning a suspect's gun from evidence. It might sound like common sense, but the law's sponsor, Representative Ryan Wilcox, told colleagues it wasn't always happening. The primary issue that we're dealing with is when we have inadvertently returned firearms to a restricted person, which turns out we have. The new protection comes as a long-standing one gets a new look before the U.S. Supreme Court. The case before the court weighs victim safety against gun rights and whether barring someone under a protective order from having guns is constitutional. And so that would not only have a legal trickle down, but a real safety trickle down. Exactly. Erin Jemison with the Utah Domestic Violence Coalition says the impact will be significant if restrictions go away. There's not a lot of controversy around keeping firearms out of the hands of domestic violence abusers. Again, I've never gotten an argument with a policymaker about that question. Jemison would like to see Utah go further like requiring those served with a protective order to surrender their guns. Research shows this type of law can help. This study from 2017 found surrender laws are associated with lower rates of gun homicides involving intimate partners by 14 percent. Armed abusers are incredibly dangerous. Attorney Kelly Roscom with the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions says the best policies make clear what needs to happen. To whom they're meant to surrender, in what kind of time frame, in what sort of condition. But depending on the high court's decision, she says that could all go away. Depending on the outcome of this case, more people are going to lose their lives. And people are dying and people are afraid to live. Now, even, those, even though those gun restrictions are enforced more heavily in other states, advocates tell us that protective orders still have value in Utah. They point out that once these orders are in place, police must arrest someone who violates the order. If you or someone you love needs help, resources are available right now. The number for 24-hour support is there on your screen.